Welcome, I'm from is Xiaomi Redmi Note 10 and today I'll show you a couple of tweaks and tricks you can do on this phone. So let's start off by going into the settings and then display where we will find two different things I want to show you. So number one would be the uh, dark mode or light mode, uh, which you can also set it up to be a scheduled one. Um, by default it's in light mode, but if you change it to light mode or dark mode, I mean, as you can see it will change it. And this will go over into uh, settings and basically all the pre-installed apps like uh, phone, dialer, uh, messages and stuff like that, making it dark mode. Now, the reason why I also touched upon the schedule one is because dark mode might not always be the best option. So as an example, during the uh, daytime, light mode will be easier to see uh, in direct sunlight. So uh, probably that will be a preferable option. While during night, uh, light mode is most certainly not the preferable option in my opinion. I would prefer not to have my irises singed out of my skull. So I would more, more rather have uh, the dark mode instead. So in here, you will have the option to basically set up the schedule if you want to. And this will make it go dark mode when, well, it should and stay in light mode during the day, which I would consider to be a really nice thing. Now, moving on to the next option, it's gonna be the color, color scheme. So if we scroll down, it's right over here. And this will allow you to set up uh, or choose whichever color scheme you want. Um, as you can see, it looks like it is set to uh, auto, which I'm not exactly sure how it defines uh, what is the recommended color scheme but anyway you can clearly see the uh, image right here and how it affects it at the auto so if you want you can change it to something like a saturated or a standard which standard is um, if we look at these three options in a way uh, auto will be basically in between saturated will add more color while standard will reduce the colors and you can clearly see those two options uh, and how they affect it now between standard and uh, and auto there is a fairly small difference but you can clearly see it uh, the auto is a little bit more colorful brighter uh, more, more cheerful uh, while the saturated is just kind of lacking in colors and then uh, such or standard and saturated is just uh, a little bit too colorful in my personal taste so again you can choose whichever one you want you can also scroll down and you'll have couple different color uh, templates what I would call so you can add specific kind of color to the image itself as you can see if I move it around it will shift now this is on the drastic side basically as you can see on the outlines of the, the color palette right here but if you keep somewhere more in the middle you can just tweak it a tiny bit make it look uh, the way you want it now moving on to the next option it's gonna be the home screen style so uh, by default, as you can see, uh, we have the uh, what I would call the Apple style. So all icons are smack in the middle of your home screen uh, and you have no app drawer uh, like you probably are used to having on Android. So if you want to change that, uh, all you need to do is go into the settings, home screen, um, home screen style and change it from classic to with app drawer. And there we go. Now it is launching for the first time, so I just give it a second, but yeah, you can see it now it's open and you can access your app drawer. And inside here, you will find all your applications. Now the benefit of the Xiaomi, uh, Xiaomi app drawer is they also added a little bit of a caveat here. So you can see we have um, categories right here. You can scroll through these and quickly find whatever you're looking for. Now, by default, it will be in the old category. I think you can change it by tapping right here and setting what the category is. Um, now, in the old category, you will have the most used apps right here at the top. Uh, then under the line, everything alpha is in alphabetical order, assuming you're not checking up the uh, categories. So, just a nice way for you to get the a more organized look. And also, as you can see, the second page now has way less applications than before. That's because we do have them all stored right here. So moving on to the next option that I wanted to show you, it's gonna be the system navigation. And this basically removes the outdated buttons at the bottom and substitutes them for something a little bit more modern and up to date, what I would call. So let's go back to the settings. We're gonna go back to the home screen 
and scroll, well, nowhere because it's right here, system navigation, and by default, it's set to buttons, but it can change it to gesture. Uh, now, when you're doing this for the first time, it will tell you or ask you if you want to learn them. I don't. Um, so I'm gonna give you a quick overview how to use them, just uh, if, in case you haven't ever used it, and also give you a tip how to use it correctly, just so it works for you uh, every single time. So uh, you have this bar, completely disregard its existence. Uh, this bar basically is useless. Um, so what you wanna do if you wanna go home is you swipe up. Now, swiping up, uh, majority of people will grab the bar or try to, which sometimes will just make you scroll up instead, as an example, like right here. So get your finger off the screen. So as you can see, I'm touching the bezel, not the screen. And from there, just swipe up. Bam. This will ensure that it always works. Uh, now, another shortcut, uh, apart from the swipe up to go home, is the swipe up and hold, which will open up recent. And then swipe from the side. I can see that it brings up this kind of tiny little arrow. Uh, when you let go, this is just a back gesture. So if I go somewhere like in the settings, just go in here, I can go back one page uh, with this swipe gesture. Um, now again, as you've seen, I did try to swipe up a little bit too early on the screen. So uh, same as with the uh, home gesture, you do want to swipe from the, from basically the bezel onto the screen. So this will ensure that it works perfectly. So yeah, and moving on to the last option, uh, it's gonna be the floating windows, which can be accessed through recent. So if we go into recent, uh, you'll have this floating window button right here. And once you tap on it, it shows you different applications that you can open up in this kind of mode. Um, you can also hold the applications like so, um, and it will give you a couple different options right here which the grayed one, grayed out one, is the floating window. Um, settings, unfortunately, doesn't support it for some reason, uh, but it does support split screen, if that is also something that you want to use. Uh, but going back to the floating window, all you need to do is just choose an app. Uh, if it's, for instance, something like Chrome that you want to use in a floating window uh, way, quickly go back to it and close it. There we go. So as you can see, because Chrome is supported by floating windows, uh, this option isn't grayed out now, so I can actually tap on it. So this will allow you to basically use a tiny little window uh, of an application, move it around if you wanted to, uh, make it small by going home and access it whenever you want. So yeah, that being said, this will conclude all the tweaks and tricks that I wanted to share. And if you found this very helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.